All right, so it looks like I am live. Um, a few glitches, Zoom and Facebook again, not playing nice together, but hopefully I'm actually here. We're gonna do pull an Oracle card and then work on a journal page. And you can join me, you can watch, you can create your own. Um, I was leaving them as prompts and I wasn't seeing any success from anyone. So now I wanted to see what happens if I join you and we create together. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I might have to do comments later because, um, you know, playing nice with them. So anyways, today what I want to do is start with a new, I just got this deck, Oracle of the Seven Energies, Colette Baron reed and I've been following her for a while. And I know this is an old, I think this is an older deck of hers. I'm pretty sure this is an older deck of hers. Um, and she just did a challenge recently, um, just this week actually. So I was really excited to get this deck. So today, take out all the beautiful cards. I have the, look at how thank you new everything is because I literally just got it this week. And what I like to do is shuffle the cards asking a question. And I shuffle them until a card sticks in my hand and it kind of just doesn't want to shuffle back into the deck. And so I'm shuffling. Um, my question today, I'm going to just, what, what kind of question do I want to ask? I mean, I'm just going to ask something pretty generic, like what are the energies of the day? What's happening today sort of all around? Shuffle that till I get an answer. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. That one was like, pick me, pick me. So... What does this one say? It is what it is. So that's interesting. Let me just put that. It is what it is. So let me just see what she has to say about that before we start. And uh, reading glasses required for this. Um, so she says, it is what it is. The key concepts are radical acceptance, engaging life on life's terms, observing circumstances and taking them at face value, recognizing and releasing resistance and denial. Seems like a pretty good fit for the day. So what happens when you look at the world? Can you see it exactly as it is or only as you assume it to be? A door closing isn't an invitation to take a battering ram to it. What if there were another door to lead you to your destiny? If you can release your attachment to getting what you want, you'll be surprised by how much energy you have for more important things. Liberated from the burden of yearning, you'll have access to what is best for all. Can you try now to accept things as they are and shift your focus and attention until that other door opens up for you? Radically accept on life's terms when you stop fighting against it and instead fight for what you truly desire, more of the world becomes available to you. When you are no longer in denial about what it is in front of you, you'll be empowered to make necessary changes with respect to yourself, your attitude and your choices. The irony is that real transformation can happen once you surrender to the idea that things are exactly as they are meant to be. If you step back with clarity and acceptance, you will realize that life is offering you something magical. Even if circumstances send you on a temporary detour, you will discover treasure beyond your imagination and a new way to embrace the world. Keep this prayer in mind. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Wow. I find that one really interesting because I was literally having a conversation this morning about what it is we want and how letting go allows that. So I think that's really important. So I'm going to try now. And first of all, I just want to preface this with saying I am not a mixed media artist per se. I do mixed media art. I love working in my art journal. It is not what I uh, I'm learning new techniques. I'm not here to teach you. I'm just going to explore this card in my own way. And you may go, oh my God, why would she do that? 
um, you do it your way and I'll do it my way. All right, I just wanna put that out there. And I'm just gonna see if I can let my other camera in now, cause. Um... All right, so let me just move over here and I'm going to flip this over. I can get started. Just give me one moment. I wanted to have everything set up, but I couldn't do that with the way Zoom was behaving. So I apologize. Hopefully that's pretty good. I'm just gonna plug it in so we don't end up dying in the middle. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and here's my inspiration card. It is what it is. Just move that. And because I didn't know what I would need, it was really kind of hard for me to pick my supplies. So because I didn't know what card was gonna come up. So I've decided I'm gonna use this little handmade journal that I made. It's full of watercolor paper. Um, it's a accordion, but um, a little bit different because it flips and flops and it's a really cute little journal. So anyways, I'm gonna use this one. And I think I'll just, I don't wanna start on page one. I never like to start on page one. Okay, I'm gonna start right here. And water, Color paper allows for mixed media as well. So I can do a little bit of everything. So I'm just gonna sit for a moment and think about what was said and then what that means to me. So it is what it is about letting go. I think I need some metallic colors. So I'm gonna, And I'm sorry if I can't see your comments because my phone would not cooperate. Let me just see if I can see them on the other. No, it's not letting me see. I apologize. I'll have to answer questions afterwards. So um, thank you for watching, but I will have to answer questions after. And so I have these two that I've got. I think I got these at Michael's. One's Decor, one's CraftSmart. Um, and they're both metallic. One is gold and one is es uh, espresso. So like the coffee. And I love these two mixed together, kind of like a brassy, bronzy kind of color. And so I think I'm going to just mix a little bit of that together. Just really kind of get some shimmer on the paper. And do, remember it's about what, what it means to you. It's not about learning my techniques or, or, you know, copying what I'm doing. It's about, there we go. I'm just going to add and I love using my hands when I'm painting, I really love getting, it's one of the reasons that I do abstract art is because I really love getting my hands in it and making a mess and uh, yeah, I just, I really like it. So I think I'm just gonna sort of a, do a rub, dry rub kind of thing back here, just picking up the texture of the paper. Yeah, that feels good to me and in my finger off. I always keep paper towel over here to the side so that I can um, wipe off and then I use those cloths for my art journal as well. All right, so now I feel like it needs a little bit of color, but something a little, I'll try purple, something a little ethereal and higher power. I don't think this is the right purple. I'm gonna add a little bit of red to it. And find a red. There we go. Let's do that and see what we get. I think I needed to go more the blue direction than the red direction. It's looking almost a little magenta you now. I'm gonna add some blue instead. We'll see what happens. Yeah, 
yeah, I think this is a little more the direction I wanted to go. And so you can just watch me finger painting and, <laughs> and playing. I might use a little bit of both though. Yeah, I cannot. adding a little bit here and there. And I don't know about you, but I have a very small workspace. So all of my supplies are like uh, up high um, because I work on the, literally do my creative endeavors on the corner of my desk uh, where my computer is. So I definitely don't get to have everything out in front of me. I tried to pull out some, you know, maybes, but let me just see. I'm going to just run a quick. I'll just make that a little drier. And I think I would like some paper and added some texture to it. So what do I have? I have this bin of different papers behind me. I'm just going to do a quick, I feel like tissue paper maybe something like oh yeah i love that so i think i don't know where this tissue paper came from some package i received but i love the black and white buildings but i just love the yes of it and one of the great things about tissue paper i want fairly small pieces because this is a small page i'm doing so i don't want you know i don't want to take up the whole page with that I'm just gonna feel like we've got something going on here with this. So I use golden uh, matte medium and I just pour it into a smaller jar. So if it gets paint and things in it, I can clean it out and I'm not ruining my whole jar of matte medium. Plus the less times you have to open the jar, the less it gets goopy and things. So I'm just gonna add some of these now. You can see the color still coming through a little bit, which is really great. I love that. That's right. Sorry for the bounce of my pages. It's because it's all folded. It's all one page that's been folded to make all the pages, so. And I loved ripped edges um, as opposed to cut edges, but that's just my preference. You don't have to do ripped edges if you don't want. A little bit down here, just to sort of peek up over this edge here. And Okay, maybe do you'll, you'll notice I talk to myself a fair bit, so I apologize. <laughs> do I want that? You know, do I not want that? Um, I was always told growing up that it was fine to talk to yourself as long as you didn't answer. Sorry, I have full blown conversations with myself. <laughs> That's just how I roll. So I'm just going to cut this off here on the edge. Make sure that's stuck down. All right. So I'm, I'm kind of liking this, but I, I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Sorry if you're watching me, you know, dry things. Heat gun is a magical thing when you uh, are doing layers, right? Because you don't want to go on to the next layer with it being wet because then everything just smushes together. So you want your paint to be dry, then you want your um, collage to be dry. And now I feel like, I feel like it needs something. Okay, so we have sort of a background now, but now what I know what I wanna do, I want to take, let me just reach up high and see 
Yes, I've got some lids here in different sizes that I am going to, and the rules, I want to add some circles to it. And I think, I think I might use this sort of lighter purple for it. Let me just see what that's going to look like. Yeah. Just going to mix it a little bit, the blue and the red one a little bit together. Okay. I love using things from around the house. I just, it, Remember always to go a little bit off the page too, because you know, I want everything sort of in the center. All right, I'm gonna do that one, I think. Let's see what this one looks like. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this one in the lighter gold. I just have to see if I can move it a little bit. Because of course I've got it all mixed together. I'm just gonna pull up some of this lighter gold and put it over here. And let me tell you, if you don't have one of these glass mats, Tim Holtz glass mats, oh my goodness, best thing ever. Um, okay, let's do that. Because they come with this um, sort of blending mat. It's a silicone mat on the side, which is just amazing and uh, wipes right off. And uh, the glass surface, everything just cleans up so easily. It's amazing. You can actually take the silicone mat off and um, I was gonna use the card. I do not wanna use the card for masking. I just wanna, I have a piece of paper in my hand a minute ago. This is the back of a card. Oh, this was from my granddaughter. Back of a card. So I'm just going to mask that off so that we, I could have put tape down. That probably would have been a good idea too. All right. I'm going to call that done. So that's a background. I'm loving that. All right. Now I think I need a little bit of white space. So, because I want to write on it. So I love gesso for that. I'm going to take this. And as you can see, I'm a, I have a bad habit of um, putting out way more than I need, way more than I need. So I'm just going to try and put out a little bit of gesso. Not really a little bit. Okay. Another bad habit I have is leaving lids off of things. All right. And I'm just going to put a little bit of Sorry for my arm, my brushes are up there. So I kind of want a little bit of a sort of a dry brushing. Oh, I tell you, make sure you dry between layers. And then did I? No, that would have been a mess. Some places where it's a little bit blobby, um, it just bubbles up because it kind of cooks the paint. But I love texture, so I am all right with that. I can hear it snap, crackling, and popping. I do, I love texture. And I find the metallics do this a lot more than the other uh, acrylics. So it must be the metal in them. I don't know if it's because it gets hotter or if it just um, has a property of the metal. All right, so now, yeah, I think we're pretty good. I'm just gonna dry brush in the center here. A little bit of gesso, just so I have a bit of a background so I can write. Because I still wanna see the background, I just wanna be able to see the writing. I think I'm gonna do that. Maybe just a little more. And again, I have put way too much on my uh, palette here. 
All right, so I'm just going to dry that so that I can write on it. All right, just so dries very quickly, which is really lovely. All right, I want to see what kind of markers do I have here. This is one of my new ones. That might work. All right, so sitting with this card, it is what it is. Um, what came to me is actually let it be. That was like the, the part that um, really stood out to me in all of that. So I'm going to actually write, let it be. And okay, again, I have atrocious handwriting. I went to a private school where we learned, you know, what we wrote was more important than how we wrote it when I was in elementary school. And to this day, I'm embarrassed by my handwriting, but uh, which is why I uh, print most of the time. And even then, I'm going to just write, let go. I'm going to make some of it a little thicker. Just to give it a little bit of, make it kind of look like I know what I'm doing. All right. I think, I think, no, it needs a little something still. All right, I think I might add, do I have a stylus handy? If not, I'll use an eraser. I'll just use this. I'm gonna add some little, I just feel like it needs a little something. And oh, oh, I thought this was a flat eraser, but I don't think it's very flat. Mm, I think it needs a little edging around the edges. So I'm going to do that. Let's try and wipe just so off the eraser. All right. And I'm also very messy. I pull everything out and then it's all here. And then I'm like, oh, crap, now I have to put it all away. Okay. So I think I want to edge. Let me see what I want to edge in. I think I'll use ink. I really like edging and distress ink. I will. I have, these are my favorites of these sort of vintage colors. And I'm not too worried about the white dots. I'm just going to try not to touch them. Mm, nope, I think it needs to be black. So you kind of like look at it and be like, oh, is this what I want? So let's see. This is a permanent ink. Yeah, I think that's a little better. Turn a little bit because that makes it a little easier for me. Oh, there's that white, so I want to be careful. Turn it and do this side. Now, another way I could have done it is with some acrylic paint. And I might go back in because I'm finding this is not edging it quite as much as I want. So I think I will do that. Let me just do this. Sometimes it's easier on a, like a card to do. I see my black. And in my art journal, I use like relatively inexpensive um, paints. Well, some of them are from the dollar store. Some of them are from Michael's. Um, when I'm doing my paintings, I often do um, much more expensive. Well, I always do much more expensive paint. Um, let me just see if I can get this. Nope, that's not the brush I want. Uh, let's try this one. What I like to do is just like half the brush dipped in paint so that it's not 
kind of just gives it a good floating line. So you just want your brush to be a bit wet, not overly wet. And then you're only dipping half of it in the paint. And then that's the side that you're gonna put. Let's hope those, yeah, those whites are dry enough now. Like I said, gesso dries pretty quickly. And I'm just gonna go in, dip it into the paint. There we go. I'm liking that a lot better. Okay. Brush is a little bit too dry now. And if, if it, the color starts to creep too far across, you can always rinse out your brush. But, all right, I'm going to call that. There we go. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about that actually. Not bad for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. I just made a small page, and but this is for. It is what it is. So let go. All right. So that was me just pulling an Oracle card from, you know, and then looking at, you know, set an intention before you pull your Oracle card. And there's so many different sets, like there's so many different sets. So uh, you have options for things that work for you. If you don't like Oracle cards, then just um, meditate on something and see what comes to you. Right? We get messages, pray on it, whatever fits for you. Um, but there's literally an Oracle card deck for anything. I mean, they have one for, you know, favorite dogs. So you can, you can have whatever you need. And then um, just creating an art journal page from that and sharing that. You don't have to share it with other people, but sharing it with yourself. Like, it's just a way to go a little bit deeper a little bit of exploration. Art journaling is a great way to look at our feelings, um, our emotions, how, how we're doing. And we often uncover things that make us uncomfortable. And so we can journal on it. We can art journal more, whatever we need to do. Yes. All right. Well, that's it for today. I will be back on Tuesday. All right. I'll be back Tuesday to do a live meditation and give you a journaling prompt. And then I'll be back again next Friday to um, pull another Oracle card and create another page in the journal. And I'm also create with me is um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. You just have to register for that one. But yeah, any, any questions, just reach out. Thank you so much. Do you listen to the creative soul healing podcast? Why not? That's where I interview creatives, healers, and people who have healed with the help of creativity. Each week, a new interview. Learn what people think of healing with creativity. Click the link below to listen or watch the latest episode. You can also find us on all the popular podcast platforms, such as iTunes and Spotify. Check it out today.